Okay, day two on working on this project. What we're gonna be working on today is, where is it? These big blocks of aluminum here, like I talked about, one of these is I think one and three quarters thick. I think it's this bottom one. That's what we're gonna be working on today. And then right now I am filling up the machine with coolant as it does its little warm up there. So we're getting things going here. I'll come back to you guys once we get things running, once we get that piece of aluminum in the vise and we should be good to go. All right. All right, so for coolant, I have five gallon buckets. I put a mark where the four gallon mark is. Um, there was a reason for that. I guess there's no reason anymore. That was for initially filling up my machine. And then I got my coolant here on this little rolly cart, courtesy of an idea from John Grimsmo. And then we've got the coolant concentrate in here. I'll put a couple just hand pumps of that in each one, stir it up, put it in the machine and we're good to go. So this is what it looks like once it's mixed up. You want a nice white color. Um, a lot of people call it milk, but this is indeed coolant. I use Qualichem 250C, 251C. And um, yeah, it works really good. So now I'm just going to open this up and you just dump it in there. So I just dumped all three buckets in there. You can see it's slowly draining. I got a bunch of chips in here. That's why it's taking so long. So it goes down there and then the coolant tank is this thing right here. And if I can get around here, you can see the coolant coming down. And so it's just going through that filter there. And this is just a 55 gallon tank. And you can see the level there slowly filling up. And then we can actually go over here to diagnostics. And this will slowly rise up. It's not the most accurate thing I found, but it gets you close. So this is at 72%. By the time all of this coolant drains down there and settles in the tank, that's gonna go up. I bet even if I just change screens, oh, maybe not, but this will slowly go up. So that is kind of your indication of, you know, when to fill your machine back up. I don't really pay attention too much to that. I normally just glance over here and look at that little kind of I don't know what it is. It's probably just a handle to get that cover off, but I just like using that to see, kind of gauge where it is on the tank. So I figured before I start working on this cavity, I might as well do a couple things like the topping off the coolant and then I'm cleaning out as many of the chips as I can here, just in this bin here. Like I said, the auger just does not like these long stringy chips. So I just got that taken care of. And then yeah, we're good to go. Um, no real reason to hose down the machine. I'm just gonna keep making a mess. So let's get that big block loaded up right there. Okay, so I deburred the bottom edge of this and I have my talon jaws in here. This is eight and a half in Y and nine and a half in X. Problem is the orange vise just barely opens up enough. It's on here between the talons, but it's to the point where it's getting really tight when you're opening it up. And I don't like that. And I don't think it's advertised as opening up past eight inches. So. I don't think I'm gonna push it. I've got, I think this is an inch, yeah, an inch and three quarters, so 1.75. The actual part is 1.5 total. So I'm probably gonna swap those out for these smooth jaws here and just set it on parallels. If you look, if I line this up, you can see I gain about a little over an eighth of an inch on both sides, so a quarter inch, and that should allow it to be closer into that, you know, whatever that good range is of clamping. So I don't want to scrap this and, you know, I wouldn't get, well, kind of drawbacks because with these towns, they really bite in. But like I said, I don't know if it would bite in as much out this far. So I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to swap these out with those smooth jaws. So the nice thing about the orange vise is you have these carve smart jaw systems where you just have to undo these two top set screws and these are little dovetails. You just loosen them, I don't know, quarter of an inch, and the jaw pops out. And it's a really slick system, very repeatable, very rigid, versus something like this where you have to get in here with a dumb Allen key, fuss with it. This is way faster. The only downside to this is, I feel like there's more nooks and crannies that you have to be careful of cleaning when you put in new jaws, but 
that's just a little nitpick. Like I said, these come out real easy. You can see all the chips that build up. You just gotta clean all that off. Make sure you clean off these dovetails in here. And then these just go right in. And then they got a even an alignment pin so it can stop it from going left to right. So really like this system. I'm gonna swap those out. All right, we've got program loaded up. Got to turn the coolant on. And this is gonna be for the first couple ops on that part. So I want to double check. It's in there. Parallels are not moving. We should be good to go. Let's go for it. First up, facing. 100,000 off the top. 100 inches a minute. Letting those chips fly. And then it's gonna come back for a finish pass. You know, like I said, I could really triple this speed, go 300 inches a minute, and it'd be totally fine. But I don't want any chance of that part moving. So take it slow, be patient about it. So yeah, 5,000 to 10,000 RPMs. This coolant just makes a total miss. That's why it's nice having the mist away up there to try to combat some of that. And we'll come back to the finish pass here. So that's just 10 thou. I've actually found that cutting dry on the finish pass seems to work pretty well. You know, enough, I'm actually gonna do that enough of the residual coolant on the top of the part will be fine. Creates less mist, and actually I've found it makes a really nice surface. I extended the pass an inch and a half off the part, so it goes fully off the part before it starts to do its little loop, like right there. Just makes the top of the part look better. I'll give it one shot of coolant here. And that's it for the facing. Let's take a look. Let's blow that off. That's not bad. I mean, it's swirly. I haven't changed these inserts in two years and Honestly, the look doesn't matter as long as it's flat and looks somewhat good, we're good to go. So next up, let's go to half inch, two flute, or not two flute, two inch length of cut. And with these, I like to walk them in a little bit better. So I'm going to, so right before it starts cutting, I just come in here Make sure nothing's gonna hit the bottom of my vise, and I'm actually gonna do that off camera real quick. All right, so we're back making a hailstorm of chips there. Just piling up. There you can see them hit the door. It was plenty far above the vise jaws, so we're good. So I have it doing 50,000 step over, 80 inches a minute. It's gonna do this for a couple minutes here, and then I'm gonna do two cleanup passes. One to finish, I left 20,000 on the wall, and then another one, just the same parameters, just duplicated the tool path, just in case there was any flex in the tool. So I'm gonna come back when we have something more interesting to show you. Okay, I found this pretty interesting. So these are the normal 50,000 width of cut chips. This was after the first finish pass. This was actually the spring pass. That's probably a couple thou of a chip there. So I'm curious, I'm gonna measure the um, X and Y there and see where we're at. And then I'm gonna check the depth, but this next tool is just a chamfer tool. So I'm not gonna show you that. Actually, why not? Let's just go for it here. I think it's just a 15 thou chamfer I'm putting on there. 
So I'm just gonna walk around that part. I'm gonna measure a couple things and I'll come back to you guys. Okay, I thought this was worth sharing. So these pins or these bushings, these bushings are supposed to be for 3 8 press fit. These pins are 3 8 and 2 tenths in diameter. So in theory, this should not be a slip fit. This should be a press fit into this bushing. Now, some of these, it is a really nice slip fit, but towards the end of the pin, I can feel it start to want to stick. Some of them, I've looked through the whole bag of 10, some of them just want to press right in. And you can, if you know, and if you've played with press fits, you kind of know when it's about to go and press in and not come out. And some of these pins are like that, but I've cleaned some of these off with WD-40 and some of them are sliding perfectly. Um, I found four of them for the four bushings. This one's really nice. This is a really nice um, slip, slip fit with no play. This one, on the other hand, like wants to get stuck halfway through. So I have to pop it out. But the way I look at it is, so this is gonna be press fitted into the mold on one half. And then half of this pin, about where my thumb is, is gonna be press fit in. So as long as that first three quarters of an inch is a slip fit, it doesn't matter because the rest isn't gonna ever make contact. So I've been checking for that. You can see that's a good fit there. Someone's gonna clip that. Um, but I found them for all four of them here. And the reason I'm doing this now is because I'm getting to the point where on the mold, I just counterboard the pins or the counterbore for these pins to press into. And I've got to make sure I have the right pins. Um, I'd rather do this now before things start getting press fitted into mold pieces and then I have to somehow figure out how to get them out. So trying to be smart about this, but uh, these are really good fits. So I'm gonna use the ones I found here. We're gonna try to get these into the mold. So here are the four that I was talking about just a minute ago. So I'm going to, the goal is take these and press these in here halfway down I drilled an eighth inch hole all the way through my stock just in case I need to pop these out. And then this is currently 10th thou, actually 20th thou undersized. So this isn't gonna come close to fitting. So we have four of those. I have a tool path I'm about to run that has wear turned on and we're slowly gonna comp that out. But before we do that, I'm going to get my gauge pins out and I'm gonna start checking the diameter of that hole. So we got the pins out here. This is a 355 pin. I left 10 thou radially, which means 10 thou plus 10 thou because on each side. So it's supposed to be 375. So this should be the largest pin that fits. And it does, it's almost, I mean, it's a nice suction fit, you know, maybe the 356 would be, probably be a press fit for this. Nope, it doesn't want to go in. Okay, so that means that we are indeed 10 thou radially off that diameter. So I'm gonna load up the tool path to take this 7 30 seconds end mill and come in there and it's gonna slowly open it up. So we're just running that first tool path. It's just going down every eighth inch till it reaches the bottom. 20 inches a minute, really slow so we don't get much tool deflection. And where is it? starting with minus five thou on diameter. Should be about 30 seconds per hole. All right, I made a huge mistake in that the tool path I just ran to slowly go in and clean those holes up, way too big. And honestly, this is because, so I put in negative wear and I'm trying to wrap my head around this, I should have put in positive wear. Let's see. I honestly don't know what I did. So I need to really sit down, maybe draw this out and think about this. For whatever reason, this is making my brain melt. Um, so I need to figure this out. But all I'm doing is this is not a big deal. And that's why I did this side of the mold first. So this is actually going to be I'm flipping it now. So the underside is going to be where the pins are. So I'm going to do the back work here, flip it. And then I have, I move the pins over a little bit in fusion and that's going to be the new front side. So this is now going to be the back. So all I have to do here is 
I have to make a little radius pocket here and drill and tap two holes there. So kind of a switch of pace, but as long as I can save that piece of aluminum, I'm happy. Okay, after talking it through with Dylan, I know what went wrong. So actually, I'm gonna keep this top side, the cavity side. A couple reasons in my head I don't really wanna explain, but think it's best. So all I did was move the holes. These are bad, these are the new ones, just in a little bit, about a half inch. So once again, pin will not fit. It is 20 thou undersized because it's 10 thou radial stock to lead. Radial, if you have a circle that's on one side there's 10 thou and the other side there's 10 thou. So 20 thou on diameter, but 10 thou radially. Okay, I get that. What I did wrong was I had minus five thou here. I should have started with like plus five thou because that tool path that comes in here to clean those up with the wear turned on, if I didn't have any wear set, it would go straight to finish size, which would be 375, which is how it's modeled in Fusion, okay? There's still, once again, 10 thou, or let's say 20 thou on diameter on that hole. So it would cut 20 thou if this number was like it is right now at zero. It was at minus. So it actually made the hole five thou in diameter larger. I measured it, it's at 380. So that's because five thou, how it was set, minus five thou divided by two because this is diameter radially that grew the hole two and a half thou on each side, overall being five thou, which is what I set it to, making the hole 380. Okay, that makes sense. So I need to start like positive 10 thou and what that'll do, that shouldn't cut anything because, actually no, that should cut 10 thou because it's on diameter. This is where it gets confusing. So as long as I don't hit zero, zero is my nominal size. So I should stay on the positive side of the numbers and I'll start with probably 10 thou and slowly work my way down and I should get it, you know, smack dab on. So. That's the goal, just thought I'd share that. It is very confusing, like Dylan said, that this is in diameter. That should be um, radially, but I don't know. So I'm gonna try this again, and uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, couple things. First things first, let me show you. I cut a counter bore. You can see the lip on that second hole, 200 thou deep, that's to clear that kind of ground chamfer so the pin will start straight and that's cut at 375 on the money but everything below that is going to be the press fit so this is a 365 plus pin okay i just went, ran the first hole with 10 thou okay so 375 is nominal minus the 20 thou because we had 10 thou on each side so that's 355. I just did 10 thou on diameter, so 355 plus 10 should be 365. And I've checked this. 365 is a nice fit, and the 366 pin does not fit. So this is the correct way of doing this. So I'm going to run this program, and all these four holes should accept this pin, but not the 366 pin. Okay, so my hole was at 365. I wanted it to be the 370. So 5 thou, I dropped it by five. So let's grab a 370 pin, and this should go in, which it just barely does. And let's check 371. Yep. And it does not go in. Okay, so. I've got the process nailed. I'm gonna sit down and focus and really try to nail this dimension here. And I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. All right, so I snuck up on it and it's the 374 pin goes in, but it's a little bit snug and that's right where I want it. I want about a thou of press fit. This goes in that first 200 thou and I can feel it start to press in. And one thing I checked was with a little square, put this up against it and it is really nice and square. So I feel like if I tap that in with a hammer, it would be a nice press fit and um, it would stay pretty straight. So I think I'm gonna call it there. I might do a quick tool path to chamfer that, 
But other than that, I mean, even just right there, it's starting to want to go. I might even go like another tenth or two, but I'd rather it be tight than loose. Okay, so now I got the pins where I want them. I threw a chamfer on them. Now I'm drilling and I'm about to ream the center sprue bushing or my version of a bushing. It's just in the mold itself. So I just pre-drilled to 177 all the way through. I'm gonna check that that went all the way through. Then I have a tapered pin reamer, if you can see that. So it's actually tapered and that's gonna come in here and ream a tapered hole like that. So the um, plastic can actually come out. It's basically draft angle. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it's very sketchy and I wanna make sure it works. That actually worked beautifully. I slowed it down to 50% speeds just to be safe. And I even made the pecs a little bit. They were 50 thou, but I made them 30 thou. You can't really tell that it's tapered, but you'll see once I start making parts with this thing. So next step is the cavity work. I mean, this is where the cavity of the part is gonna be, or at least half of it. So I guess we gotta make sure I got my program set for that and we're gonna start cutting that out. So this first cycles with a 16th inch end mill. It's about an hour and 15 minutes of roughing here. It's just going back and forth. So I'll come back when I can actually show you guys.